Good morning, everyone. Once again, Rosie O'Kelly, welcome to the Kitchen Table Doctor. And if you listen very carefully, you will finally hear the sounds of Morse code. Which means, yes, we have succeeded in getting the DX150 with the SP150 sidecar speaker working once again. And it was a very interesting story in how it was done. And let me turn down the radio here, receiver, so we don't have a lot of interference. And it was definitely a joy to work on this uh, receiver. And if you haven't seen the prior three episodes, I would really encourage you to check them out to find out how I really came into this uh, receiver uh, through a gal in Atlanta and what she said was wrong with it and the various steps we went through, I went through, to get it fixed and running. As you can see, it's a beautiful unit. And um, I was lucky that it came in in such good shape. And you can see internally, it was very clean, the circuit boards. And this is uh, over 40 years old. This realistic unit was made from seven, 1969. I believe through 1973, and there were various versions of the DX 150 A and B, and this was a D realistic DX 150. And just describing a few more things because once I got it working, I did want to play with it a little bit this morning, and I really, really, and it has the 20 and 40 meter bands, and it has the uh, fine caliber adjustment here. for really zeroing in on the signaling. But what I really like over here is the antenna trimmer function. And if you see that, my hand is actually, my fingers are on the antenna trimmer. And what this actually does is it matches the impedance of the antenna that you're using with the, uh, with the receiver. And as I turn the dial, you'll see a change. And it's similar to a uh, FM stereo receiver, but I can match the uh, antenna where I really can't do that on a um, FM receiver unless I have some matching equipment. But most uh, shortwave receivers have that built into it, and it's a really uh, nice uh, touch. So I've been sort of fiddling around and checking it, and it's working well. It also has the uh, AM band on it, but... As far as what was wrong with the unit, when I went ahead and if you look at episode number three, you'll see that I suspected that the power resistor had gone bad. Now again, in this particular area here, you can see the big two watt uh, black uh, half ohm resistor, metal ox resistor. And I thought that was a little darker banded in the middle, but in fact, that tested good. And the way I test my components is I actually will lift one leg off the circuit board at a time and to take them and isolate from the circuit and uh, test them. And that resistor tested good. When you're testing your components, I really do suggest that you don't test them in the circuit, but in fact, take the time to desolder one of the legs of the uh, component, lift it up and test it. Uh, otherwise, you don't really know what you're reading. You could be reading a whole circuit there and your readings could be off. Having determined that that was not the problem, I went ahead and tested a few other components, and it actually turned out that this Zener diode that you see down here that I'm pointing at had actually gone bad, and it tested open throughout, so I don't know how, perhaps it surged, but it's unusual that it didn't take out the power transistor there, which tested fine, and I... Uh, reseeded that with some thermal grease, being careful to get it on the mica so we wouldn't have any shorting. Anyway, I replaced that uh, Zener, and when I went ahead and put it back on the Variac, well, what do you know, it started up and uh, brought it up to power, and it came up just fine. There is one light that is out on the uh, unit, the simple bayonet style, although this looks lit up. In actual fact, that's just backlighting. A simple bayonet bulb will have to be replaced, but uh, otherwise it's a fun project. It is complete. I contacted the uh, woman whom I got it from who sent it uh, to me, 
when in fact she does not want it back because she's moving into an assisted living facility. So I'll either have fun with it or else I'll go ahead and put it up on eBay. I think it makes a great unit for $100 with the sidecar speaker, which you don't see too often. Or I may go ahead and just refresh my Morse code. But uh, I might mention the antenna I'm using is really just a piece of junk. It's not the type that you would use for a... Uh, for a ham radio receiver uh, on the 40 meter band, the 20 meter band, a typical ham operator would have antennas that were custom built to tune to those uh, frequencies. In other words, a 40 meter band would really be a 120 foot long antenna, either at a full dipole or a half wave antenna. And uh, what the hell, this isn't that. <laughs> This is an eight foot uh, length of uh, ground wire and you can see my fluorescent lights up there so it's also daytime. So this is the worst possible time for uh, probably DXing and doing receiving on the hand bands. But you know what the heck, it came in good and I'm thrilled to have done the job and there'll be more uh, exciting projects in the future. And as usual, leave comments. I appreciate nice comments. If there's any questions or concerns that you have, I love to hear them. If you're interested in a unit, you can always contact me uh, through my Google Gmail, which is I can make it like new at gmail.com. And this is Rosie, and I thank you very much, and have a great rest of your Sunday.